Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I am Joyce Gomez from the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture or PSA, a um, multi-stakeholder well, partnership platform catalyzed by Grow Asia and the Philippine Department of Agriculture in 2015 to bring together different stakeholders in agriculture to talk about issues and how to solve them together. We are currently supported by the Australian DFAT, and for this webinar, we are supported by the International Development Research Center, or the IDRC. And we would like to welcome you to our second of the four-part webinar series on biosecurity threats in agriculture that will run from the month of May until June. Last Monday, we had our first webinar on the ASEAN Fall Army Worm Action Plan presented by Dr. Alison Watson, and we also had Dr. Jedali Sakura there who answered technical questions of AW. If you would like to have a copy of the report and the summary of the discussion, please do let us know. We will be flashing our contact details later. And we are happy to share also that for this webinar, we have a total of over 70 organizations who registered today. Okay, so um, if everyone's ready, may I call on our first speaker this afternoon. He is a career scientist too from the National Crop Protection Center, College of Agriculture and Food Science of the University of the Philippines in Los Baños. And his research interests include insect taxonomy, biological control, pest management, insecticide management, and pest biology. I will now give the floor to Dr. Mario Navacero. Okay. Uh, my topic is the research studies findings that uh, the NCPC had undertaken since uh, we were involved in the whole armyworm problem in the country. Uh, actually, in late 2018, November and December, we were already aware of the possible incursion of POW in the Philippines, uh, but uh, our uh, Formal engagement actually started in March 25 when we hosted a POW awareness seminar together with the Paribet uh, industry and uh, whose uh, um, the audience include uh, government uh, institution, uh, staff from government institutions and also private industries. And since then, we started collaborating with the Bureau of Plant Industry uh, and other agencies concerned. The actual or first documentation of the presence of POW in the Philippines was in June 7, 2019. It was found in Piat Cagayan by the Regional Crop Protection 2. They sent us a lone specimen of uh, a lone larval specimen, which we identified to be that of POW. After we gathered additional specimen, we conducted uh, DNA analysis uh, to further uh, uh, verify the identity of POW, and it turned out really to be 100% POW. This is in collaboration with the Institute of Feed Science, Entomology, and Plant Pathology, also under the CAPS or UPL, we think. Even before the incursion of PA, we were already doing studies, researches on uh, army worms outbreak, like for example, the outbreak of black army worm in 2010 and the outbreak of uh, pit army worm in 2015 to 2018. And in some cases also occasional outbreak of cutworm and true army worm. So we decided to come up with a simple guide on how to differentiate POW from the different armyworm species in the Philippines that can be found also on corn. So they are here in the, in, in the slide. We have seven noctuid related species to POW. Four are belong to the same genus as Podoptera. One from Mithi Masiferata, the true armyworm. Then the corn earworm, Helicoberpa armigera, and the corn semilipper, Chrysotexis aerosema. So among those uh, army worm, only POW possess the distinct four dots at the penultimate segment of the abdomen. The rest of the species don't have that. But with regard to the uh, presence of uh, the Y shape, uh, colored Y shape on the head, it is present also on other species of uh, Spodoptera, including true army worm and uh, corn earworm. So it is really the four black dots you know, at the penultimate segment that uh, separate this species from the rest of the related species. Uh, since then, we started uh, uh, going to the different places in the country to scout and survey, survey for the other incidence areas of fall armyworm. And we were able to find them uh, July to October of 2019. We found them already present in the four major islands of the Philippines, the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I think uh, BPI had more areas uh, recorded more than 200 uh, municipalities. So in October, it is already widespread uh, in the whole country. So we also began studying the biology of the pest. And in this uh, slide showed you that the development period takes about 25 to 24 days. 
from egg to adult. No difference in uh, between male and female except for the pupal period, which is uh, a day about a day longer than the male in the male than the female. However, uh, since we are continuing our rearing in the laboratory, when you offer them very good uh, source of food, like very young corn seedlings, the development period may actually, for the larval period, may actually be reduced to, uh, from 14, reduced to 10 to 12 days. So, and this may be happening in the field, especially when the corn states being attacked is at the seedling state. Okay, see, so we also uh, do some observational studies regarding the incidence and damage of wow. The first picture on the uppermost, uh, left, uh, right uppermost, showed you that the pow start infesting corn even at 12 days after planting. So that is basically about six to eight days, ah, yeah, six to eight days after seedling emergence. So, and the uh, stages that we got, there are second to third instar, so meaning uh, egg laying started uh, about six days earlier. So that is about six days after planting or two days after seedling emergence. So at letter B, uh, it is also, as the larva grows, it infests the developing uh, leaves going into the wall. So during early world stage, usually the, the larva are already in about uh, third to fourth instar. And by mid world, uh, that, uh, the larva can cause act, uh, actual cutting of the leaves. At uh, this stage, probably uh, the larvae are already on the fifth to sixth stage. They also attack uh, tassel. And, uh, and ear. Okay, uh, here is uh, how the different damage, characteristic damage by the different instar look like. For example, the number one is the first uh, damage of the first instar. You will see small circular holes on the, at that time, this is the youngest leaf, but as the larvae grows and so with the plant, you will find uh, elongated uh, patches of the feeding marks done by the second instar. Then later on, it moves to the, again, to the developing leaves and the kind of damage with the more uh, elongated feeding damage and also the uh, actual damage or, uh, are actually being uh, done by the third to fourth instar. And when they reach the, uh, the wall that can uh, actually produce uh, very severe damage, they are already in the port, uh, in the pip to the pip instar. It will be better if we can teach our farmers how to detect uh, the damage at the very early stage, and that is uh, damage of the first and the second instar because in any, or in most uh, um, control measure, the younger instars are the more vulnerable ones. So aside from the bi uh, basic biological studies, we also started documenting the different natural enemies present in, in the field introduced species. It is a common knowledge that uh, native species establish new associations with the uh, Introduce a species. In this case, we were identify, we were able to identify a species of Colonus charops brachypteron as parasitoid of pow, and also two species of tachinid parasitoids. So all in all, we have about four species of parasitoids uh, identified associated with pow. And actually, there is another species, the pip one. Samples sent to us by the Regional Crop Protection Center for an insect parasitoid, which we suspect to be Telenomus remus. Uh, Telenomus remus is present in the Americas and Africa, and was also found in Africa. Uh, it was actually first described here in uh, Southeast Asia, particularly in Malaysia. Uh, in terms of uh, pathogenic uh, microorganism, we were able to uh, document the presence of permitted nematodes. These particular nematodes uh, cause 12% natural epizootics in uh, Gonzaga, Cagayan. Another natural epizootic, uh, we were able to document it in another site. Uh, Meteorism relay causes about 20% uh, natural epizootic. And the picture on the left, uh, is, is this is a laboratory induced infection on the larvae of pow. So the light green color of the spores distinguish this from the uh, meteorism on the soap play. So we also tested the available species of entomopatodianic fungi like meteorism and nesopla in Vivero Basiana. Uh, we have just finished the uh, laboratory testing of all these uh, entomopathogens. For Relay, uh, a paper had been already submitted for publication. And uh, for meteorism and nesopla in Vivero Basiana, we are writing uh, another paper on this one. Uh, we also conducted uh, a simple field bio Epicacy evaluation of insecticides, including also um, an entomopathogen, Bubere basiana. Uh, 
in our experimental field, infestation started 10 weeks after transplanting. So we made a blanket application to get rid of all the larvae, which turned out to be 60% uh, infestation level. So we introduced a laboratory reared second instar, uh, one larva per plant to maximize the um, expression of efficacy. So after several days or after the first treatment application, uh, you will notice that the three insecticides uh, perform uh, a lot better than the Viveri Vasiana and also other control measures. So the general trend is uh, insecticide perform better, while that of Viveri Vasiana, we, we noticed that there is an improvement in the bioefficacy uh, performance. Initially, it seems to be not effective because uh, there may be some possible uh, effect of the stage of the crop. Remember that entomopathogens uh, are very sensitive to microclimate, and uh, this time of the year is very hot here in the Philippines. But uh, as the plant grows, uh, the microclimate probably in the, in the plant is more favorable now. So we are seeing uh, improvement in the performance of Uberia basiana. So this is our experimental field. Uh, a spectral image was uh, taken using a drone, and we tried to analyze uh, and determine the normalized different, difference vegetation index, uh, NDBI. Uh, and in the, this result shows that the, the based on monitoring, uh, damage rating, the result of NDBI is consistent with the uh, actual rating that we did in the field. And so with the lip, area, uh, lip surface area also is supportive of our rating done in the field. As I have mentioned, uh, we would like also to determine whether we can increase the efficacy of uh, entomopathogens and we will be setting up in two days' time in, at the NCPC field, experimental field, uh, comparing uh, wall application and uh, spraying of uh, entomopathogens. So uh, that, this is just to determine whether if you can improve uh, the performance of entomopathogens. Since uh, the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority of the Philippines released the list of uh, insecticides that they granted emergency use permit, so we decided to uh, come up with the simple recommendation uh, in this case, uh, those that are cat categorized as highly toxic should be used only during the early growth stages of the plant because uh, number one consideration is safety of the applicator because as the plant uh, grows higher, uh, drip during spraying will be greater and uh, the applicator will be at risk. Uh, if possible, you can also do spot application. Uh, this is actually being done by some farmers planting BT corn. Remember that uh, PAO only attack uh, non-BT corn, and among BT corn, there are 10% repudes plant. And when they saw that this repudes plant, or 10% of the standing crop is being damaged, they conduct spot application of insecticides to the repudes plant, or non-BT repudes. So we also recommend direct spraying into the wall uh, when the larvae had already started infesting the wall. So because most of the insecticides available are contact insecticides. Uh, very few are systemic, so they really have to hit the target. And the only way to, for that to happen is to really uh, direct your spray on the wall of the plant. Then for insect growth regulator, they are more effective when used on early, pers uh, on early instars of PAO. So as we have shown before, uh, we should be uh, aware of the early uh, damage uh, signs, signs of damage of early instars, and that is the circular and uh, elongated uh, feeding marks on the leaves. Uh, there are also among the leaves, uh, one of those in the leaves are sensitive to sunlight, so we recommend it spraying late in the afternoon. And definitely, of course, uh, to avoid development of resistance, we have to alternate the different mode of actions in this case. So we recommend actually uh, every two weeks uh, alternation of mode of action. And in this case, if you alternate every two weeks, you will need at least three different mode of actions before you can go back to the first uh, insecticide that you use. Aside from the things that we have already done, there are already ongoing researches. Uh, the first four are actually being implemented at NCP. Uh, some of our colleagues are involved here. And the last two is being implemented at the Institute of Web, uh, Weed Science, Plant Pathology, and Entomology. And there are also proposals uh, that have been submitted under evaluation also. Uh, hopefully, some of this will be funded soon. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sir Mario, for that very detailed and informative 
uh, presentation in FAW as well as your recommendations for the FAW. We will be moving on to our next presenter. Next slide. So, um, key responsibilities of the group field quality manager of East West Seed includes uh, the functional supervision of QA field inspectors in all countries to drive development and secure implementation of sampling strategies, with, which takes into account not only number of production batches in their volume, but also key aspects of field quality. He is also responsible for securing field inspection guide guidelines and forms, as well as securing system revisions and updates regarding determinations related to all aspects of field quality, including phytosanitary Inspect. He is also the point of contact for the local field inspection teams in case of major seed production issues. Uh, he is also part of the Swiss Seed Corn FAW Task Force. I now give the floor to Mr. Chodoro Hortu for his presence. Um, <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for that uh, very nice introduction, uh, Ms. Joyce. Um, on behalf of uh, DocJed and East West Seed, I will be presenting some of the initiatives being done by our, by our company to address this uh, fall armyron threat, uh, which brings us to corn learning centers of East West Seed. So this uh, corn learning center is a venue for farmers training on cultural and integrated pest management. Slide to please. Uh, based on nationwide survey, farmers have two challenges. First, lack of crop cultural and production practices guide. And the second one is this insect pest and diseases and their proper management. So these are the reasons why these uh, corn learning centers were established to provide farmers with information on corn, cultural production, and pest management. Traditional farmers tend to cling to their old ways and practices, and sometimes it's hard for them to accept change if there's no proof or evidence. So that's why one of the objectives also of the CLC is to provide hands-on training workshop on farmer's field, which is based on to see is to believe and to implement concept. Next slide, please. So here we can see uh, our nationwide corn learning centers uh, in 2019, uh, we have in Negros Occidental, we have in Surigao City, Abra, um, Nueva Biscaya, Aglipay Crino, Danao, Zamboanga, Baler Aurora, Aklan. And in 2020, we had established um, in Tugigaraw City, Ifugao, Santa Teresita Cagayan, and Tumawini Isabel. Next slide, please. So here in this slide, we can see uh, our staff, our team, uh, conducting uh, field training on corn production, uh, joining the uh, our farmers. Next slide, please. And here, uh, our team also is doing uh, lectures on diseases and uh, fall armyworm management uh, in the field. Next slide, please. And through the efforts of uh, Dr. Jed uh, Ferrater, we were able to uh, head a strategic, strategic partnership with the uh, CABI. And, uh, you know, this CABI is uh, this uh, portal wherein we can have uh, these fall armyworm updates. Next slide, please. So East West is planning to produce uh, this uh, fall RBO materials in various dialects. Um, these brochures, presentations, videos, and live demos should have different versions in English, Tagalog, Visayan, and Locano. So, so that farmers should be able to relate to this uh, to be effective. Next slide, please. Uh, so this picture uh, shows, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is Doc, uh, Doc Jed Ferrater, uh, together with also our team uh, in the field doing uh, fall RBO fall army worm damage assessment. And in the next picture is, uh, uh, you can see we have, they're having a small talk and discussion with the farmers. And the third uh, picture is, uh, this is in LGU, talking with the government officials. Next slide, please. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Dabasero already showed us how to identify this uh, fall army worm. In addition to this inverted Y head in the larval, uh, in the larva, and also this uh, trapezoid spots in the body, the distinguishing characteristic characteristic is uh, the four uh, dots in the in the near end. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, IPM campaigns nationwide. So IPM is an ecosystem approach to crop production and protection that combines different management strategies and practices. This includes uh, cultural, physical, mechanical, biological, and chemical to grow healthy crops and minimize the use of pesticides. So IPM helps farmers conserve environment. Uh, produce safe and quality crops, and maintain farm profitability. The main objective of, of IPM is actually to increase responsible pesticide use. So from here, this IPM pyramid, you can see that uh, cultural cultural practices uh, has has the largest chunk because uh, we, believe, we believe in IPM that uh, we should minimize the use of uh, pesticides. As you can see in the in the picture, pesticide use is uh, uh, it has the, the smallest chunk. 
on the top. Next slide, please. Um, uh, even if we are using uh, uh, chemical insecticides as a last resort, of course, uh, if we use insecticides, we want to, uh, we don't want uh, the insects to, to develop immunity or it's, it's like uh, insect resistance. So how do we, how do we prevent this? Uh, first, if you have a smartphone or smartphone, Android or, uh, or Apple, you can download this IRAC app devices, IRAC app, uh, the Insecticide Resistance Action Committee. And uh, from here, uh, you can just type the active ingredient and then it will show uh, the group where that active ingredient belo belongs. So it's really highly recommended to use three modes of action in the cropping season so that uh, the insect will not develop. Next slide, please. Also here, we can see uh, the FAO awareness campaigns that we have done in 2019 to 2020. Um, we have in Surigao, Abra, Nuevo Vizcaya, Aurora, Pangasinan, Antique, and we also did uh, here. We also did a uh, FAO awareness campaign in Philippine Seed Industry Association in Manila and Bukidnon, Lanao. Next slide, please. Victoria Laguna, Cebu, Aklan. Also in the head office QC, Bukidnon, and uh, we have uh, one in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Next slide, please. We also have in Santa Maria, Ilocosur, Pangasinan, Abra, and Iloilo. Next slide, please. So here in the picture, uh, we can see the team. Uh, these are the main lecturers in fall, Ar fall army worm. We have uh, we have Pauline, we have Nova, and of course we have Doc Jed Perater and, and June Ramos. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, uh, we uh, East West Seed follows the NCPC, NCPC IPM recommendation for fall army worm. So of course, uh, as I mentioned in slide 10 in IPM, uh, we use cultural practices uh, which includes plowing under corn stubbles after harvest, synchronous planting with management and hand picking. For the biological control, this was described by Dr. Navasero a while ago. Uh, we have this metarisium, we have this trichogramma, and we have this uh, release of earwigs uh, because these are uh, beneficial insects that eats um, the fall armyworm. And lastly, the chemical control. So we only apply uh, when all other controls are failed or is not, uh, not effective. So we apply the recommended insecticides with contact and stomach activity following the man manufacturer's recommendation. Next slide, please. So here we can see the FPA recommendation for fall armyworm. This was also mentioned a while ago by Dr. Navasero. So here you can see the different uh, registered uh, pesticides that were uh, recommended by FPA. Next slide, please. Um, importation of uh, fall armyworm pheromones. Uh, we are requesting uh, FPA and BPI uh, to make fall armyworm uh, importation less stringent so that uh, we can help our corn farmer. Next slide, please. So how, how do we effectively control uh, fall armyworm? We believe that is, this is a collective effort of farmers, LGUs, DARCPC, DABPI, state universities, private sector, and NGO. Next slide, please. So about the nationwide action plan for all sectors of fall control, uh, we have 17 regions, 17 regional crop protection centers nationwide, we have 1,488 municipalities or local government units, and we're in the target is the uh, corn. Uh, on our side, we believe that we can help uh, FAO awareness and IPM campaigns at, at LGU level. And for the for the LGUs, uh, we believe that uh, they should be strengthened as hub for FAO information and immediate action. Next slide, please. Well, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, chemical application is not the only solution. Let's promote IPM. So multi-sectoral or PPP, public-private partnership in FAO control. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sir Teodi. And may your initiative inspire others as well to assist our smallholder farmers and technically capacitating them. And may I request both our speakers to turn on their webcams for the Q&A. So we have a few. No, not a few. We have a lot of questions from the audience. So um, if we would start with for uh, Dr. Navasero. So the question is, given that the medium to large instars attack are well protected from most insecticide applications, shouldn't spraying of insecticides be stopped after the first weeks? Uh, most of the available insecticides are usually uh applied as a spray. That's why in our next experiment, we will be trying to uh, uh, modify the application, uh, through wall application by uh, uh, mixing them with some uh, uh, inert uh, carriers like uh, 
probably choir dust, sand, or lahar, powdered lahar, or also uh, ordinary soil. This is especially true for uh, entomopathogens. Now, with regards to uh, synthetic chemicals, although they, the uh, later inserts are hidden inside the wall, uh, as I, as based on our, as I have recommended, the spraying should be directed to the wall when the stage of the insect of the larva is in the uh, later stage or they are hidden inside the wall. Uh, remember that uh, the, the structure of the plant, uh, the wall itself, uh, when you spray uh, directly into the wall, some of this will uh, run down into the uh, wall so it can still reach the uh, larva inside the wall. Thank you very much, Sir Mario. And we have a question I think we can ask the both of you. Um, have there been reports of major damage on sugarcane in the Philippines? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, sugarcane is one of the crop reported as a host of papau, but unfortunately, we have uh, gone around uh, here in Luzon, and we haven't found it yet on sugarcane. Although we have received uh, information that in Negros, they already found the uh, infestation of pow on sugarcane. But in India, the report was uh, infestation was normally uh, within the range of 5%, not as uh, serious in than corn. Thank you, sir. Um, sir Teodi, do you have something to add? Um, I think I must, I must agree with uh, Doc Nabasero. Uh, I think there is there's really no no really very heavy damage on uh, sugar cane. So most on corn and, uh, you know, in sorghum in, sorghum in India. But uh, for sugar cane, I think uh, it's, how should I say, it's not really negligible, but not really that important, something like that. Thank you both. And um, a related question as well. Uh, the proposal for surveillance on other hosts, such as sugarcane, uh, when and where are the surveys likely to take place, if uh, funded? I think this is for uh, Sir Mario. Actually, the, the project has started in, formally started in February. However, our activities uh, was installed because of our problem with the SARS-CoV. Uh, it may start once the uh, quarantine was li is lifted, and probably June we will start uh, doing the surveillance and monitoring. Thank you, sir. Um, I think this is a question again for the both of you. Uh, if you use BT corn, will you be protected from FAW? Uh, okay. Uh, as far as uh, we know, as, as far as uh, our observation had uh, brought us, uh, POW attack only non bt corn. So uh, usually um, the damage or, I know East West knows this, uh, heavy usage of pesticides actually occur on sweet corn because sweet corn is actually a high value crop uh, in uh, Cagayan de Oro one farmer that we interviewed actually went as far as spraying three times a day because uh, of his expectation uh, he can actually gross 300,000 per hectare with his uh, uh, sweet corn so he really justifies uh, the overuse of insecticides on BT, uh, on sweet corn, three to five, uh, three times spraying in a day, uh, mixing different insecticides. So that's really a problem in some areas. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, regarding this BT corn, um, uh, there was a report by Syngenta. Uh, in India, that um, because this uh, this uh, BT corn is really specifically for uh, Helicoberpa, 
but uh, there was a report that uh, by by the by Syngenta that they, they, it offers also some kind of protection to to uh, fall armyworm, but not that high. Uh, probably 20 to 40 percent, uh, 20 to 30 percent, something like that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, what they observe in in India by patient Genta team. That's all for me. Okay, thank you both. And then uh, we have a couple more. Um, so the question is: uh, Is nuclear polyhedrosis virus effective also for FEW? Okay, uh, we've been using nuclear polyhedrosis virus for cutworm and also for bit army worm. Unfortunately, this uh, isolates from cutworm and bit army worm. We have tested it in the lab against PAU and it's not uh, effective for PAU. Although in other countries, there are available uh, nuclear polyhedrosis virus. Uh, I think that is also one of the possible uh, thing that the government should do, uh, we can probably import the NPB from other countries because the local NPBs, the NPBs of, uh, of our uh, native species, uh, of cutworm and bit armyworm, do not affect or do not, uh, uh, it's not effective against PAU. Yeah, I, I must agree with uh, Doc Navasero. We have, uh, you know, Based on studies, we have no no really effective uh, NPB yet in the in the Philippines. But uh, yeah, we have there are some species of NPB in uh, India that uh, the the I mean the effectivity is quite high. But in Philippines, I think none. Okay, and then we also have a question with regards to the FPA. So, in your knowledge, has FPA acknowledged entry of um, pheromone doors? for FEW? Um, in one of the uh, research that we have started, uh, we are actually focusing on developing a uh, sex pheromone for PAU because our experience was that uh, we tried to import three different, uh, from different sources, from three different sources, the first one, uh, instead of uh, uh, catching PAU, uh, it catches, actually it caught uh, corn semi-looper, adult, not, not PAU. Then the next one that we uh, imported, uh, it was actually the true army worm that is uh, being uh, attracted to the to the pheromone. So I think, uh, uh, Four of my colleagues at NCPC went to Taiwan, and Taiwan are actually developing their own uh, sex pheromone, and that is actually where, where we pick up the possibility of doing research uh, for developing our own uh, sex pheromone because uh, you have to really come up with a different blend of the different components of the pheromone and find out which among those blend will really be effective against PAU under local condition. Okay. Um, yeah, Miss Joyce? Can okay. I, yeah, yeah. Can I answer? Uh, yes, in addition to Yeah, in addition to the importation, um, I think we have imported uh, pe uh, FAO, Peromon Jules. Uh, but yeah, that's that's part of part of our presentation because uh, we want we want uh, the government <laughs> Less is less stringent or less strict. We we imported, but uh, in limited number only. It's uh, for research purposes. But um, we want to import more so that we can help our uh, corn growers. Thank you very much to you both. And um, we have another question for uh, directed to Dr. Navasero. Uh, you mentioned that FEW does not attack leaky corn. So how about sweet corn and other consumption? Corn products of East West Seed has East West Seed uh, observed significant FAW infestation in corn varieties being sold in the market. I think it's it's for the other speaker. East West Seeds. Yeah, I, I can answer yes. that. Um, we have reported cases in uh, Mindanao and in the Visayas, where in 
there is really heavy infestation of uh, um, fall corn armyworm. So that's why um, it, we are really we are really asking the government government to, to you know help us also so that we can also help the farmers. Um, we have report uh, in 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 Mindanao we're in uh, the damage is almost close to 80 to 90 percent, something like that. So uh, our farmers are really you know. They're really helpless. And for um, both of our speakers, do you recommend drone spraying? And have you tried multi-spectral imaging using drone for FAW detection? Uh, in my presentation, we tried to use that, uh, spectral imaging. Uh, in the last uh, portion of my presentation, in one of our setup, we use that to determine the spectral images and the, the, the normalized difference vegetation index uh, that we can actually derive from uh, drone images, uh, derived images, and uh, it works in our experiment. Now I don't know if it will be in the large scale because. Uh, especially, uh, it works in our experiment because the, the differences in terms of efficacy of the different treatments are very remarkable, but I don't know if, when damage was not as that remarkable if uh, the drone system can really differentiate the health status of the plant based on the damage. Uh, yes, um, I think we can... Uh, we can use drone, but for spraying, uh, for the taking pictures or you know uh, taking images. Uh, actually, we have not yet tried it. And uh, in other countries, uh, they are they are using drones to spray. And this is uh, uh, how do you say? It? This will help. This will also help us in our IPM strategy because you know, uh, if if uh, the drone is being used to uh, to spray, then we will minimize. Uh, you know the uh, the damage or the, the in terms of safety for our sprayers. So yeah, in other countries, big countries like developed countries, China, US, they are already using a drone. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And then um, for for the both of you as well, we have a question. Um, the result of the quarter one 2020 production of corn, both for field corn and consumption, has been issued. It was reported that corn production was significantly reduced compared to the previous year's figures. While it is said in the report that the fall in the corn production was due to reduction in area planted resulting from low prices in previous cropping seasons. In your opinion, does FAW manifestation partly explains the fall in corn production during the first quarter of the year? Okay, uh, I think uh, Pao contributed to that, uh, has a contribution to that decline in production because uh, in terms of yellow corn, only 50% are actually BT corn, the rest are non BT. So uh, the other 50% may only may also be affected by POW. Secondly, even BT corn, 10% of the seeds are actually reputed non BT corn. So for every uh, hectare of uh, BT corn, one tenth of that can be actually damaged by POW. 10% of that can be actually damaged by POW. So, uh, the fifty percent non BT probably uh, POW has significant contribution on the decline in production. Okay, and for the last question before we wrap up, um, the question is uh, for the both of you: Do you know of any government support provided to the farmers encountering FAW? Uh, government support uh, last year uh, and the early part of 2019 this support we were uh, that, that the information we received is that uh, the government agencies particularly the DA and RCPs provide pre-insecticides 
uh, to farmers uh, that uh, experience infestation of fowl. That is one. Um, and uh, I think uh, active active uh, information campaign was also being launched by the Bureau of Plant Industry and the DA. Uh, other than that, I, I, I don't know of any other uh, support uh, being given by the government. Uh, in addition to Dr. Navacero's uh, answer, I think uh, in terms of information dissemination campaign, I think uh, um, the government is helping. And I think there's also these uh, biologicals uh, located in different RCPCs, regional crop protection centers. They are providing um, uh, uh, some biological control agents. Uh, can you please confirm, uh, Dr. Nabasero? I think they are providing some biological control agents in RCPC. Yeah, yeah they are providing metarhizium and um, yes. uh, earwigs. Uh, but yes. so far, we haven't really have an evidence that uh, this uh, biocontrol agent is really working well. It may be contributing, but in terms of its efficacy or degree of effectiveness, uh, we haven't have any information uh, pointing to that direction. Okay. Thank you very much to our speakers. Unfortunately, that is the only time that we have for today. Again, we would like to thank the NCPC represented by Dr. Mario Navacero, East West Seed represented by Sir Chidoro for two for your valuable insights and sharing. We hope that this information and uh, that you shared are both helpful to us and as well as our participants for today as we face the risk of FEW in the country. Again, we would like to also thank our participants for their questions, their very active participation, making this webinar interactive. And then before we close, next slide, please. Uh, we would like to share that we will be having the third and the fourth installment of our biosecurity threats in agriculture on May 28th and June 4th. For, and we also hope to see you there. And if you have questions, next slide, please. Clarifications or would like to reach our speakers and the PTSA. Our contact details are flashed on the screen right now. And thank you very much. And we hope to see you in our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.